Welcome to part three of RPG Battle Making Awesomeness. We're going to focus in more on the code, kind of the back end of this game, and getting it all ready to rock, getting our characters able to interact with each other, respond, take damage, and being able to see that damage, the result of it, on the screen. So let's uh, keep going. Let's start by, or continue by, heading to our fighter action script. Because now we have something for our, our sprite to do. So when we select an attack, we want to go ahead and set that attack to our current attack right here. And what's it going to equal? Well, it will be equal to a melee attack. And we haven't actually assigned melee attack. Let's do that now. We click on the wizard. Do we have fighter? Yep. And then range. So here we are. And we want to go ahead and grab the melee attack and the prefab uh, and the range prefab and actually we don't have those yet either so perfect this is going right along to lead us to the key aspects of creating our well our battle here we have a prefab folder prefab create folder moves let's dive into that and for this we're just going to go up here and go ahead and create empty and let's name it Prefab. And we're going to then add a script to this, which we're going to work on in a second. So this will, we'll go ahead and add it or create it. And the script will be called action script or move script or fight script. It's the actual move, right? So it's the move. So action script or here, attack script. Okay, and this will be attached to the prefabs of our moves. Create. And let's go look for that. Attack script. Scripts. And there we are. And here that is. So with that set to go, with that set to go, let's head back over here. And current attack is going to be equal to melee. And similar down here, I'm just going to control C this. I can get rid of that. Control V. And what's, it's not going to be a melee attack. What it will be equal to is our range attack. And then both of these, once we do that, actually, let's simplify things. We don't need that. We can do this. Melee attack, and then we can go ahead and do get component. What component are we going to want? Well, we're going to want our attack script, which we just made. And then of that, what function will we want? We're, we're going to want to do the attack. And who are we attacking? Well, we're attacking the victim. We haven't created attack, so that's why it's like this. Control C. And this would just be range. Oh, did I? Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm just Control C, Control V. I have them off by one. All right, so melee, melee attack, range, range attack, and this would be victim is equal. So file, and let's save all that. And then let's go ahead and work on our attack script. Now, this guy has quite a lot of variables, all of which are important. So let me start hammering them out, and then I'll go through them. We are going to need a bunch of serialized fields, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. Copy. Paste, and then I'm going to use Control V now. Okay, that should be good on those. And again, I'll go all over all of these. Let me just get them in here. Okay, now finally, right? So what this? That's going to be the owner of this game object, which we'll use Magic Attack. What we're asking here, we're going to have a yes/no checkbox. So if the user has a Magic Attack, and it could be a melee attack or a range attack, you check this box because it will be in the inspector. And then we're going to have it cost magic, magic points, magic cost, uh, mana, whatever you call it, whatever you want to call it. Now, the min attack multiplier and the max attack multiplier, that's just the range and values that an attack could be. You could not have that. But honestly, the uh, making it less predictable and a bit random adds some fun to games. Now, serialize, well, we know serialize field. Same with defense and maximum and defense. We haven't created fighter stats yet. So if this red is bothering you, because even if you have red, it's correct, you can do that to comment it out. Private float damage, private float magic, X magic, new scale. 
And we'll talk more about that as we go through the magic portion. All right. Now let's go into some of these functions. And this is going to have to do with the magic again right now. Whoops. We do not want this outside of the class. And we haven't added all the visual elements of magic yet, but we might as well get the stuff in here now to make life easier later. And this is going to be related to the magic bar that shows the user, it's the HUD interface, uh, how much they have left. And this is going to be the stats for the player, right, for the owner. And this is another piece that we're still in the process of creating, but let's get it added now. And if this red here is bothering you, once again, we can go back up here and get rid of these. There's going to be some red for what we're doing right now. I'll tell you that. All right. Target stats is going to be equal to the target. Well, the victim. Now, if the attacker So what we just said here is if the attacker stats magic is greater than their magic cost, their mana is greater than how much mana it costs, because uh, even if it's not a magic spell, a non-magic spell costs, costs zero mana, oh, and equal to, which is why we have equal to. So if it costs zero mana, they have zero mana, they can do that spell. So we're just always going to check that they have uh, enough mana to cast a spell, even if that spell costs zero mana. Okay, And then let's use our multiplier for... Minute, yeah, so we're going to use a random range between the min and the max multiplier. And again, magic cost is, oh, not here. It should be up here, and it's the cost of a spell. Copy this guy. There we are. And now we just want to do... Uh, the actual attack, so damage would be equal to, and we're going to assume it's melee because, or non-range because, well, melee or range, attacker stats taunt, attack, okay, and then if it's a range attack that happens to be magic or a melee attack that happens to be magic, let's say if magic attack. So if it is a magic attack, and that's the boolean at the top that we set up, damage would then be equal to not what we just said it, but to multiplier times attacker. All right. And so we're going to say, yep, it's going to be the multiplier times the attack stat. But if it's a magic attack, not in mind that, we want the damage to be equal to the multiplier times the magic attack stat. And then we would also want to say attacker stats dot magic, and we're going to subtract the cost, right? Um, this is shorthand, but this is actually saying is ma uh, attacker costs magic is equal to whatever attacker's cost magic used to be minus ma magic cost, or whatever their magic used to be minus magic cost. All right, so that's looking great. Let's keep going here. So coming up with a random number for their defense range. And now to figure out the damage, what we're doing here is we're saying we're going to take the the damage calculated up here or here, and we're going to subtract the defense multiplier times defense, and then use math f on that to make it a nice even number. Owner, get component. And we're going to play the animation name. And animation name should be up here. Oh, I'm just getting stuff all over the place. Just going to copy that. Now let's leave magic together. I'll paste it here, and I need something called it. 
animation name. All right, and then we should be just about done with this part. Yes, let's do And that will make sure that the enemy of the target receives the actual damage. And there is red in here, and there should be. We need to be making that. And we can do that next. Let me make sure this is all saved. And this is looking great. So we're getting there. All right. And now let's go ahead and get rid of some of this red by setting up our fighter stats code. So fighter stats is shockingly going to be attached to our fighters. So let me click on wizard hero and go add component. And I'm just going to type in, type in fighter stats, new script, and add. Now let's go ahead and make sure this stays organized, otherwise chaos ensues. So I'm going to drag this into scripts, double click, fighter stats, double click. Here we are. Okay. For fighter stats, we're going to want to start grabbing a lot of aspects, well, that make up our characters. So we will at the top need a serialized field, and, well, a few of them all, put them in here and then explain. We're going to need three, so control C. Oh, we'll probably need more than that, but three is good for now. Control V. And what we're going to set up, we'll be adding shortly. Health fill and magic fill are going to be the images that represent how much mana or how much health the player has left. To keep this looking nice, since there is going to be so much within the inspect of the of unity i'm going to put a header and that's all that does in inspect and i'm going to just put stats above it these are all going to relate to the actual features or characteristics of the players okay so again health magic that's how much health they have how much magic they have left or mana attack is the strength of their attack defense strength of their defense range um, will be the strength of their range attack. Speed will determine who goes first, and maybe if you do an extra turn sometimes. Experience, of course, is how if you win, you get so many uh, so many points of experience, and we can kind of determine and play around with that. And then we do need a public variable next, but I don't want it in the inspector because I don't want to mess with it. So to make sure I don't, I'm going to hide it in the inspector, and what this is going to be is public int next act turn. It's used for calculating whose turn is next, and you will see uh, what I mean as we build it. And a few more variables, but we're getting there. So these are going to be to resize the health bar, resize health and magic bar. So private. And it's going to be the transformers. Transform health. And these are longer variable names, I know, but I wanted them to be descriptive. They're pretty important. So let's just go over real quick. Transform, what is transform? Well, transform is this thing. So when I say let's grab the transformer, I'm going to grab the transformer of health and magic, which will be the bars that represent the player's health and magic. Then what? Well, I want to know their scales, because as the player gains health, I mean loses health from the battle, or spends magic or mana from, you know, uh, doing spells and things of that nature, you need to shrink their size. And how are we going to shrink their size? Well, we're going to keep track of the scale of these items. So that's what all of that is. Now let's keep going here, and we will be using a start. Let's make sure private. Yep, that's what we need. And then we're going to, now we have health transform, we have health scale, we have magic transform and scale, but we need to set it up. It's only declared, it's not equal to anything yet. So to do that, and keep in mind, we do not have these built out in Unity yet, but we're going to go through this since we need the fighter stats script set up. And we do want to make sure to set them up to be local scale. Okay, start health and magic. We're just saying, hey, grab the current health and magic at the start, only at the start of the game, because we do we want to keep track of that, so we know the proportions of uh, when resizing the scale. Well, when resizing the bars. All right, and now we need something so the player can receive damage, and that is why we originally came here. But along with damage and fighting and attacks goes with the health scale and the magic scale bar. All right. Float damage for an parameter. How much damage are they receiving? Health will be equal to health minus damage. Yes, there is a shorthand way for writing that, but we'll leave it at that. It's more clear, I think. And then animator.play, and I think we called it damage was the animation. Let's double check. Yes, so we'd want to play the damage animation, right? If they're getting a hit, if they're taking a hit, we would certainly want to be playing the damage 
animation because, well, they're being damaged. Okay, so animator play damage. And then what we will want to do eventually is set text, set damage text, note self, I guess. And then we want to check if they're dead. So they just were hit if health is less than or equal to zero, right? I guess we could do less than one, but less than equal to zero, dead is going to be equal to true. And this is red because I think, yes, I forgot something. We need a, let's make this public for now. Yeah, because we're going to want to access it. Public dead equals false. Actually a bool, we've got a value type. Oh, we're not going to, we're only accessing it in here. So private bool equals dead. Perfect. Now, we're going to need a, a tag to make sure we have the dead item marked as dead. So I'm just going to do a game object tag is equal to dead. And let me go ahead and add that because I'll 100% forget. Tag, add tag, dead. Okay. And we're not going to set the wizard as dead. We just want to add that tag. And then what would we do? Well, if they die, I'm going to go ahead and destroy their health fill because they will have no health fill anymore there's no full health bar at all and destroy the game object destroy that player okay now what if they're not dead so what we would want to do is change because they're getting attacked so if they're not dead we probably do unless there is no damage you need to change how much fill how much health there is in their bar so new x X, because it's only on the X axis, right? We're not going to smush it down. Our health bar will be right and left. X new health scale is going to be equal to the health scale dot X. So the current one times health divided by start health. And you do need these parentheses because of order of operations. We want the computer to do this math first, then all this math. Okay. Now, once that is done, we need to actually put those changes in effect by doing health fill dot transform. And so we're switching up the transform, which is that thing in inspect that controls the width, height, and all of that. And that is good. We might put in a function later on for continuing a game or ending it or something of this sort. So now let's do a public void update magic fill. So now, just like we did with health, we want to make sure that we don't need to update the, uh, the bar represents magic or the mana. So equals... Um, shorthand for this minus equals cost, right? That'd be magic is equal to magic minus cost. But let me just make sure we're clear and do this. Okay. And uh, keep in mind, there's a Y here because we're changing the vector too. We're just changing the scale though of the X value for both of these, not the Y, right? So we're just grabbing the regular Y scale and keeping it as is. But right, exactly the same as up here, taking the magic, multiplying it by the start, uh, dividing magic by the start magic, multiplying that by the size of the scale for x, and then setting up a vector too, which you do have to do. You can't just grab those items and change up variables. You need new vector twos to assign to it to make sure that we have a stable game object that we're using. All right, and ooh, that definitely shouldn't be a Boolean value. It's not true, false. It should be a float. Let's get that changed over. Let me save all this up. All right, so we have stuff such as the fill bar for health and magic or mana that we have in code right now, but we haven't actually placed on the screen. So in the next episode, we are going to start working with more of the visuals of our game and getting those bars set up and ready to go.